I've got this simple reloading station set up here. And what I want to talk about was just, if you're brand new to this, don't let this be too intimidating to you. I'll walk you through the steps that I do to reload. And if you're curious about this, I made a separate video. This is just simply a quick attachment to the face of my bench. So when I'm done using it, I can just remove these bolts and then I can set this off to the side and I can have clear access to my workbench. Lee is pretty inexpensive and you know, I know there'd probably be some debate about, you know, whether, you know, RCDS is better and all that. And it very well may be. But for me, in the limited amount that I reload, this stuff works fine and it does exactly what I want it to do. And what today is December the 19th of 2022. If you had to buy all these components right now, um, not counting the dies, but, but I want to say you could probably get this for $45, give or take. And a lot of times you can find that with free shipping. You can get this for about $30 with free shipping. And you can get this piece for maybe $25 or $30 with free shipping. So what, 50, let's just say this is 50. So you've got 100 in all of these, plus whatever die you want. And the Lee dies are gonna run you about 30 bucks. So the only other thing that I really use is some kind of a lube mat. You don't have to do that. I mean, you can buy a little tube of lube and put it on a paper towel and do that. I mean, you don't have to actually buy one of these, but I want to say this was like 30 bucks. So, you know, for hundred and less than $150, you can have a pretty functional reloading setup. When you're ready to reload or starting to reload, let's, we're going to use this as our, uh, our spent casing. And obviously you're going to have, you know, whatever, 10, 15, 20 more like it that you're done and you want to reload. This one's already been deprimed and full length resized, but we're just going to pretend it doesn't. So you'd have a primer in there. You would go into your Lee loader kit and you would get this die. You can always tell because it'll have a, a little pin sticking out of it. That's your full length resized die and depriming die. And what you're going to do is you're going to screw it in. And Lee comes with really good instructions about what to do, about how to set these up. Basically, when you have a, you know, you're going to have a shell holder that sits right here. I've already taken it out and installed it on the ram right here. So you're going to put your shell holder right there. And when you raise your ram up and it hits the bottom of this, you want to screw it down about another turn, uh, about another quarter of a turn. And then you'll use this lock collar here and this lock. So mine's already set up. So once I do this, the depth's right. And then what you'll simply do is you'll take your, your spent casing, you'll put it on the shell holder, you'll raise it up, press it all the way down, pull it out. And now your case is deprimed, full length, resized, ready to go. You'll repeat that cycle with all your cases, and you'll also want to make sure that you're using case lube. And there are different methods for using case lube to make sure that your case slides in and out of the dice um, problem free. Because if you don't use case lube, it's a good chance it could get stuck. And then you've got a great big mess, and you don't want to do that. So, this is the case lube jig that I use that I like. It's simply a, a pretty hard uh, rubber mat, it's a little bit porous and it comes with a little bottle and you just kind of drizzle a tiny bit of lube on there then you put your casings on here and you just roll them back and forth and it'll you know just a little bit of lube will go a long ways with you know probably 10 15 or 20 casings you can just keep rubbing rolling across here and you can tell when you're out because when you go to pick the case up you can just tell there's nothing on it but this is a rcbs simple little lube pad so now you've deprimed full length resized all your cases and you're ready to go on to the next phase. At some point, which I'm not gonna show in this video, this is maybe where you start to look at, you know, am I gonna use some type of a, uh, a method to clean my brass, whether, you know, a tumbler type thing to clean your brass. So now, after you've gotten the full length resize and decapping process done, the next process is, is to go to this piece right here, which is your priming tool. And this little piece up here is just where you simply put your uh, your primers in there. And it's really, really simple. You, you simply just open this lid up. You pour your primers in there. 
and before you close the lid, you can just you can just tap it, and they'll all write themselves in the in the proper orientation. You close the lid, and you see where it's got on, lock, or open. If you put it in open, the flap's gonna come up. Obviously, if you put it in lock, it just holds it shut. And then when you turn it on, it's got a, a diamond-shaped wedge in here that allow the primers to actually seat down here into the bottom feed feed ramp. So when you hit when you put it into the on position, it'll allow every how many primers you got to land into this feed area. But don't turn it on until you actually have it in your your priming tool. Put it in there. Now click it in the old spot. And you will um, pull your handle all the way up. When you do that, it'll allow a primer to slide into the feeding mechanism. You're gonna have a shell holder that's inside of here. The shell holder that's in this one is different than the shell holder that's in this one. Let's get this out. This shell holder you can see has a pretty good lip or rim on the bottom where it makes the connection into the bottom of the rim. This shell holder that's in here is basically, basically minus this protrusion here. It's just basically the shell holder here. So then all you do is you take your shell and you slide it into the shell holder, push your handle down, pull your shell out, and your shell's primed. Then when you push the handle into this spot, the next primer will fall into place and you just repeat the cycle. Just almost as fast as you can go. Every once in a while, the primers will get kind of stuck in here. You may have to give it a little thump and then it'll, it'll um, cause them to move again, but it's still really simple. All right, so now you've got all your cases primed and you're ready to go into the next phase, which is gonna be powder. So there's two options with the powder. Well, there's probably three options, but the two options that I'm gonna talk about, and I'll touch on the third one, is you can buy a gizmo like this that's a powder dispenser, but also the Lee loader comes with a, a scoop. And on the instructions for the Lee loader, on one side, there's lots of grains of bullets, lots of different powders, and there are gonna be lots of options where it'll say use the 3.1 CC, it'll say 3.1 on here. There's a lot of them. There's some of them that are not. And one thing that you can do to greatly expand the capabilities of your of your dies, in addition to this Lee Loader scoop here, is you can buy this Lee Dipper Kit. And it's got a whole series of dippers in there, every one they make. So now, depending on, you know, you may have a different powder that requires a different dipper. By buying this dipper kit, you've greatly expanded the ability to do different loads from your loading data. All right, so if you're only loading a small amount of cartridges, for me, I may simply just use this, pour my powder into a container, scoop it out, level it off using a powder funnel, Put the, put the powder funnel on top of there. Pour your powder right in there, boom. You can just scoop it out of the jar or the bucket, whatever you have your powder in, pour it in there. You can go pretty quick. Now, as I said, I was gonna talk about specifically two methods for me, but touch on the third one. So just straight dipper from container through a funnel is method number one. Method number two, is gonna be something like this, where you put powder in here. This is a uh, measuring reservoir. This is actually the tube that regulates how much powder. And getting this set up, I'll do a separate video on that to get this set up. It's a little bit finicky, but not too bad. But anyway, you put your powder in here, and it's pretty cool, because when you raise this arm up here, it allows the powder to drop into your reservoir then when you put your cartridge underneath a little upside down funnel here and you pull the lever down, now it discharges the powder in there. And so that's very consistent. So sometimes when you're dipping into a jar, even though you're tapping it on the side, 
you'll notice little variations of the height of the powder where you know, okay, I'm not getting it exactly perfect. And then that's where I'll step into, you know, the, the third method, which is probably what a lot of reloaders do, is they're using a scale to weigh out very precisely every charge they do. For me and the type of shooting that I do, it's just not necessary. I get the accuracy that I want for the hunting applications that I do. And it just speeds me up a little bit on the reloading process. So I can get very consistent loads just by using this. Now I'll use this if I'm gonna reload say 30, 40, 50 cartridges. But if I'm just gonna do maybe 10 or 20, mo a lot of times I'll just, unless this thing's already set up completely and ready to go, I'll just scoop it. All right, so now we've got our, we've got our case full length resized, primed. We just put a charge of powder in here and now on to the last part, which is going to be seating the bullet. And then you go to the bullet seating die. And you simply screw it in. Now, what I like to do here is if I've got a round that's been working well in one of my rifles, the factory round, I like to take my calipers and measure that round to get the measurement off of that round just so I know what it is. So then what I'll do is when I start here, I'll put this back in the shell holder. And I will set, so you, you, you lock this in with the lock ring. And then up here is the actual adjustment for the bullet seating depth. So then I'll back this, I'm, on, I'm not touching this because it's already set, but I would back this way off and then I would slowly push it up. And you can feel it when the bullet starts to seat. So I'll push it, I felt the bullet seat a little bit, pull it out, measure it with my calipers, and see how close I am to the uh, dimensions of the factory cartridge or whatever length you want it to be. And maybe you need to adjust a little bit more, so maybe a turn or two. But obviously you want to creep up on it. You don't want to go too far, because I mean, not like you can't pull a bullet out, but it's a little bit more difficult than if you just creep up on it. So now I've made a slight adjustment, pop it in with the bullet, pull it out, measure it. Okay, I'm good with that. Then you're set and you're ready to go. Then you just, once you get your first bullet and you're happy with the length, then you just set a cartridge in there, set a bullet on top of it, push it up to the ram bottoms out, pull it down, and you're done. And that's pretty much the nuts and the bolts of reloading with this kit. Um, one other thing that's you know, I don't know if it's cool about the lead system or not, but I because I'm not familiar with any of the other ones too much. I, mean, I know their names, but I don't know all the specifics about them. Is it can be cool. Sometimes it can be a little bit annoying. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Is they have these quick change collets in here. These quick change collets, which actually just slip right into the throat of the, the press and you can pull it in and out very fast and just rotate it about a half of a turn and now it's locked in there. So what that allows you to do is you can actually buy multiple collets and you can always leave them on your, your die. So now your die is always set up the way you want it and then when it's time to use it, you just pop it in the, the, the press and make about a half a turn and it's set up every single time, time instead of having to totally unscrew the die every single time. So that's kind of, I like that. But unless you have a bunch of these um, collets, when you go to turn your die, a lot of times you're loosening up that collet, then you've actually got to uh, loosen up the die. When you're reloading, having a tray like this to stack your cartridges up in, is really handy. You're ready to full length resize. So you put it in your press, you do your process, and then you just move it over here. So you just kind of cycle your cartridges back and forth so you don't accidentally get out, you get out of order or get out of sync. And then what I like to do is have some of these cheap glad containers here and I'll just put a label on it. So if I have to stop or whatever, like, okay, these have all been primed and resized and I'll just write it on with some tape. So if I come back in a week or a month or whatever it is, I know exactly where I'm at. Like these are ready for primers, powder and everything. They're ready to go. All right, well, that's what I have on uh, the way I reload. If you have a comment or question, please leave it. 
And thank you for watching, and maybe this will help you if you decide to get into reloading and realize that you don't have to spend a, a ton of money to do it and have anything really fancy. You can have just a basic setup and have a lot of fun reloading some cartridges.